I'm Scott Allen Miller. It is the 8th of July, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. And today I'm going to be talking a little bit about an interesting subject, I think, about how uh, places like Nicaragua and places like, say, the United States or Western Europe take their approach to the appearance of the outside world completely differently. And we're going to touch on how that relates to what you see, the appearance of security and security measures between the countries and why you see security here in Nicaragua and don't see it in the U.S., even though in the U.S. you're taking security generally much more strongly. We're also going to be wearing a new hat to support uh, saving the lives of children in Cambodia and protecting the rats uh, that help save their lives. We're going to put a link for that for anyone who's interested in donating to an incredibly important cause down below. Uh, thanks to my wife who has been visiting the demining rats in uh, the land mining rats in Cambodia and uh, brought back information about them. So thanks for joining me today. And we're going to get to our topic right after the bump. All right, today on the show, we're going to be talking about the appearances of things as they apply to different countries. And here in Nicaragua is a great example. Something that comes up a lot on the show is people asking about the barbed wire that you see. You can see it, I hope, in the video across the top of the fence here. We're also filming today with the GoPro in wide on the Hohem M6 iSteady with the AI tracking enabled and uh, we're definitely going to be learning some about this and how it works and it automatically puts me in the video uh, in the center of the video and follows me around so this is interesting that i can walk around and do this and uh what did i just step in but uh it's neat that it can follow me around the yard at least for the most part oh i believe it has lost me at this point let's see if it can uh get me back and we're back and uh, it's gonna take some some work to get used to this to figure out how it works when it works what do i have to do but it's nice i'm actually on a tripod and it moves fluidly and in theory i can walk all over the place and it should be able to keep tracking me uh pretty much anywhere so we're able to show a lot more do very different shots um, and hopefully add some interest to the show so in this particular case i want to talk about the barbed wire and and this comes up for a couple of reasons one is people ask this about security and certainly we want to talk about what does this mean from security implication but also from a living and these dogs are crazy i i hope you guys, I need to keep them in the video they're just nuts um and, and what does it mean and why, why things look the way that they do here? And I was talking to one of uh, the viewers of the show and he was saying about he had lived in some places that were, were kind of similar in culture in, in, in this particular aspect to Nicaragua. And one of the things that was really interesting he found between uh, growing up in Europe and living in North America is that in Western Europe and North America, there is a very, very strong trend towards uh, having to have things be incredibly well manicured and maintained just across the board in life in like every aspect of life and this could re refer to having beautiful yards uh back gardens your house has to be immaculate every side of your house no matter how people approach it no matter what they're doing your house has to be perfect and, and and just everything you go through the city parks and they have to be perfect and you uh travel to um, uh, just everything, right? It, it's hard to describe until you really see what I mean. But like, for example, when you're in Austria, they famously have like, even their fields look perfect, every little thing. And one of the things that he said, and this is a really interesting take on this, is that in many of these cultures, it's that they have lots of leisure time. And so when you have lots of free time, and you you just are free to focus on things that are honestly pretty trivial. And uh, not that it doesn't make for beautiful environments, but it it's very different than potentially what other cultures are like. And one of those examples is in a place like China or here in Nicaragua, people tend to prioritize doing things with their time that matter over 
maintaining immaculate lawns over uh, city parks being exactly uh, perfect with like teams of people making sure that every aspect of those places are, are, are exactly as they should be. I don't know the exact words to use for this. And, um, you know, growing up in North America, I grew up in New York, and one of the things that we put an unbelievable amount of effort into uh, all the time, and my father did long after I left until just recently, is, is mowing the lawn and maintaining this this entire lawn system that is so perfect and and not that we went crazy with it but it was always a thing where i'm not sure why it loses me so much it really does quite a bit um that, that there's so much work goes into keeping the lawn and and everything around the house looking so uh exact and so nicely kept and if you were in a nicaragua and had a farmhouse no one is going to mow the lawn. They're going to maybe have a lawn, maybe have trees, but they may just let it go wild or cut it very roughly and not very often or whatever. Like the amount of effort that goes into maintaining the look of the outside of your space is very minimal. The attention would be put on instead of going out and mowing the lawn, maybe having people over to enjoy the outdoor space, maybe going out to a restaurant more often, or just having uh, more projects to do. Because quite often in places that have lower income, people need to work more to be able to make ends meet. They don't have as much leisure time necessarily, simply because they have to work more. And so putting lots of effort into things that honestly don't matter uh, can be a problem for them and may not be something that they're willing to do. And so that was that was a really interesting, I think, take on the situation to say, oh, oh yeah, it, it really hit me. Now when he said this, that it was really true that people kind of go for good enough. They do maintain things. They make sure that things aren't falling apart. They make sure that the security gate works. They make sure that things are functional and look nice. And of course, this is a very well-kept garden. So this is not a great example of this, but this idea that you know you go out from even really nice houses and they often don't necessarily even paint the side of their house only the front they don't maintain a beautiful outdoor space they only worry about the indoor space they um, if they have a garden they certainly don't care about the space outside the fence or across the street uh, and one of the great examples is where he's living if you cross the street it's mostly just weeds or shrub and it's like well what difference does it make who is being affected by the fact that there's nothing there except for shrubs? Nobody's really being affected by it. Of course, would it be nicer if it was all perfectly maintained and that every couple inches was like a itty bitty garden? Oh, of course, that would be really cool. But how much money, how much time, how much effort is going to be put into something like that? Does it make sense for anybody to be spending that kind of time, that kind of money on doing that? And the answer is easily no. But if you're in North America, if you're in the United States, Canada, if you're in England or Germany or Austria, people will be like, um, yes, every single inch of the universe has to be perfectly maintained all of the time. That is, that is just how it needs to be. And, and if you come to Nicaragua, you come to China, they're gonna be like, um, there's way better things for us to do with our time than to focus on that there. We're not gonna do that, right? We, we're gonna do the things that matter, but that isn't one of those things. That's not where our time is going. So where does that bring us when we're talking about the barbed wire and security and stuff like that here in Nicaragua? Well, it actually, I think, ties in far more than people may realize. When people ask me, why is there barbed wire everywhere? It seems strange to me because it means that there it's a really secure place. We don't have to lock the doors of the house. We're able to go outside easily. But of course, we don't want it so easy that people can just come up over the wall and walk into our yard and go and take the things off of our tables. We want to be able to leave a laptop sitting outside. We want to be able to leave a phone outside. We want to be able to just my cameras. I want to be able to sit them on my table and not worry about someone jumping over a wall, running over, grabbing it and running away. I'm not worried about a home invasion. Nobody is worried about a home invasion. That's not true. I'm sure somebody's worried about it, but that's not the major concern that people are thinking about. They're thinking about how do we keep people from just grabbing the things when we turn our heads and look the other way. And that's, it's this super simple crime of, very petty uh, crime of opportunity. It's just too easy if the wall is something you could just hop and it took no effort at all, anyone passing by, not someone who's prepared, not someone who's making an effort, just someone passing by could grab the wall take a quick hop, see what's available, grab it and run out the gate. Cause of course the gate opens from the inside. So getting away 
wouldn't be a major problem. And in North America, why do we not do that? Well, the easy answer is, one, we don't secure our outdoor spaces. We simply think of our outdoor spaces as places that we can't secure. We also tend to make them much more private, at least in places where we tend to be a lot more fearful of our neighbors. I grew up in New York. We did not have fenced backyards at all. My family, when I had, of course, it was much larger. I grew up on a farm. Our backyard was a wide open space. Did you leave anything critical out there? No, you could leave a phone on a table. You could leave a laptop, right, if you're just going into the house and back out because nobody could get close without you having lots of warning. So that made things easy being out in the country. But when I lived in the city, you would never leave anything of importance on your patio or anything like that because someone could just come around the corner and snatch it. It was just way too easy and there was no real way to protect against it. But we weren't considered about uh, concerned about any kind of major crime. And because it's New York, people just didn't spend very much time outside. So the idea that you would need to leave things outside on a regular basis just wasn't there right here you want to be outside all the time to the point where we make our houses essentially wide open so even when you're inside you're outside so it's a completely different lifestyle well when i lived in texas where people are really fearful of their neighbors like m trust me moving from new york down to texas one of the things that hits you is how much fear there is about everything people live very very scared and of course, all over America, compared to most of the world, is a very fearful culture. People are just afraid of their neighbors. They're afraid of the government. They're afraid of big business. They're afraid of small business. They're afraid of employees. They're infl afraid of employers, right? Everybody seems to be afraid of each other. Political parties are afraid of each other. It's um, and, and one of the reasons that the discussion of guns, for example, is such a big thing is because people are afraid and having those kinds of things makes them feel safer. It doesn't actually statistically make you safer, but it makes you feel safer. And that's why people are so concerned about it in most cases. And it's one of the reasons why people feel they need to have them in their backyards because their backyards aren't secured in very much of any way. And moving from New York to Texas, that feeling of absolute fear that your yard needs to be fenced in and hidden. And, and like, we, sure, we do that here in Nicaragua, but that's because we live outside and our stuff is sitting outside. Right, but we're not doing it because we're trying to be super private, right? We're wide open right over here. You can see right in. So it's a different thing. We don't want people hopping the fence. In Texas, we depend on being completely opaque, like literally people can't see in. So your desire to hop in is low and a fear that people will very likely have a gun. And if you were to hop a fence, you may be looking at a life-threatening situation. That's not very likely to happen in Nicaragua. It could, but it's very unlikely, right? People feel pretty confident that they could hop a wall if it was low effort and potentially go into your house and only be chased out with a baseball bat or maybe a, mach a machete. But if you run, you're probably going to get away. Um, in, in Texas, there's a really high chance that you will be shot and that's not something that people want to face. And so that's a big piece of how that security is handled in places like Texas is even in New York and Texas, we lock the houses. The houses are fully locked down like fortresses. Um, I know much, much of my family, uh, even if they're in the house and just coming and going, they lock the doors behind them at every moment. They never allow the house to go any amount of time without the windows, doors, everything locked down to the point where even if we go out to get the mail, people will often lock us out as we're going out to bring in packages because they, they don't think about someone's out there that is quickly check the doors all the time the level of fear of the outside world is so high and this is common like this is not a specific case this is how people often are in the united states they're afraid of their next door neighbors just walking in and doing something terrible we don't have that fear here right so it's a completely different world the house is wide open so we need a practical sense of security and the first thing i was talking about how we're not so worried about the way things look that's where this barbed wire comes in. Barbed wire is everywhere. And why? Because it's practical. It is a simple, practical way to keep people from hopping over the wall. Could we do something far fancier? Could we do something far more complex that was just as effective and much more beautiful? Absolutely. We could come up with quite a number of ways to do that, potentially. And a few places do. I have seen a few high-end communities where someone put in a lot of extra money, not maybe a ton of money, but a lot extra, to put in some type of deterrent that was much more attractive or invisible. And that's fine if that's something that you want to do. But for the majority of Nicaraguan society, saving money is a high priority. Having the safety of not allowing people to just easily hop the wall for, you know, no effort whatsoever is important. But the idea that you're worried about how it looks, 
simply isn't a high priority. It may not actually occur to very many Nicaraguans that it's ugly or something that should be addressed. To Americans, it stands out immediately. Many of you have mentioned it, and certainly when I first moved here, I constantly saw the barbed wire here, and I lived other places before here that also had the barbed wire, like Panama City, and I was used to it, so it wasn't a shock, but it's always a, that's not attractive, right? In North America, we never see that, except for, like on a prison. Here, you see it all the time. So now having lived here, I'm very desensitized to it. But when I first got here, I had the same reaction of that's ugly. I wish I didn't have to see that all the time. The difference is, is that I understand why it's there, that it's about keeping people from just entering for no effort whatsoever. And it allows us to then live outside with a great degree of comfort. We don't have to lock our houses. We don't have to put our laptops away. We don't have to worry about this stuff. I can leave any number of things out all through the night, whether I lock the house or not. And I know all of my stuff is still going to be there in the morning. I don't have to have a lot of extra security. I don't need to have a security guard. I don't need to have anything. It's sufficient. Do I have a security guard? I do, but it's mostly for answering the gate at night, uh, bringing in food deliveries. It is very comforting to have a person walking around at night. I, I love that and it's a very inexpensive thing, but do I need it for a security standpoint? No, not at all. So it's understanding that on one side, the security aspect of this is a sign of how secure things are. You don't bother with barbed wire in places like New York or Texas or elsewhere in the United States or Canada or whatever, because it is ineffectual. If someone is going to break into your house, they're going to put in an effort. They're not going to do it casually, right? The risks of being shot are too high. The chances that your house is unlocked is too low. It's not worth taking those chances until you're making an effort. So if you want to come over barbed wire, you just throw a blanket over it. That's not keeping out anyone who's really putting in an effort, but people aren't really putting in an effort here. It's not like that. So in the United States, you always or almost always have this, this, I'm, I'm really going to rob this house. I'm really going to invade this house. I have the chances are someone who's invading you is armed themselves. They have a plan. They have scoped out your house. They know what they're doing. That's not what's happening here. So the barbed wire wouldn't be effectual there, but guns and locked doors are and security systems and, and automatically calling the police and all that stuff. Here, this is all we need. This is a sign that this really simple little uh, tool is enough to make us feel safe, enough to make us feel like we can confidently leave things outside. And so on one side, on the security side, you should be seeing this barbed wire and going, Wow, it is so secure that all they need is some barbed wire that barely keeps out a, a hungry cow, right? I don't know if you've ever had cattle with really good grass on the other side of a barbed wire fence, but they will push through that fence. Barbed wire is not going to stop them, right? So a motivated cow is just going to come right through that. A person with a blanket or a tool or anything is going to come right through it. That's not going to stop them. Uh, but that it is effective enough that you never hear of problems with it is amazing from a security standpoint and that we consistently don't worry about the fact that the tops of our walls isn't perfect. It doesn't look the way that a North American would expect it to look is okay here. No one worries about it. No one thinks of it in those terms because if you go on the other side of that wall, there is grass that is not cut. If you go to the other side of the street, it is open shrubbery. It is just un, untaken care of and it's fine. It's, it's not abandoned. It's not uh, derelict. It's simply we don't go around mowing the public space. We don't go uh, pruning the shrubs in, in no man's land. It's not something that people worry about. It's not an important area. Those That aspect of putting in so much time to make things look perfect explains a lot of why people don't think at all about the barbed wire and lots of other things that you will see when we drive through cities and people say, well, that's that doesn't look like a really great area. Much of what people are seeing, of course, Nicaragua is much poorer than Western Europe or North America. So there are aspects of that that are true. But um, and we've talked about how the houses here are inward facing and that when you make a beautiful house, if you're going to have great furniture, you're going to make your house beautiful. It's all on the inside. People don't worry about what the outside of their house looks like, particularly, especially in the cities. So you get out in the country, it starts being a little bit more like it's like a farm thing and you see it from every direction. OK, they'll, they'll start to put in some effort. But in general, we don't worry about the outside of houses or much less than we would being in the United States, for example, 
but we worry about the inside, the place where we're actually living. And if we do have outside space that we live in, then that looks beautiful, but only the parts that we use. If you use the front of the house and not the side, the side of the house will often be ignored, like completely ignored. They don't even bother painting it, right? Just, just bare concrete. That's super common. And people are like, what? Who cares? Right? I don't look at it. I don't care if you're looking at it, right? And that's, everybody does that. And this comes from Spanish culture, which gets it from Moroccan culture. And you go to Morocco and you have just concrete blocks. And when you go inside, you realize you're in a mansion and it's a completely different world. It is so the opposite of what North America does, but it's just a cultural difference. A big piece of that is this, we don't worry about all the extra spaces. We don't, you know, we know that the entire world is not going to be pristine. There's going to be jungle. There's going to be desert. There's going to be, you know, just open shrubland. And that's just part of the, the natural world. And they allow much more of the world to be natural. They don't worry about manicuring the whole earth. And in doing so, things like the barbed wire become a, oh, well, it's just, it's up against the wildlands. I don't care what it looks like. That, that really changes that mentality and explains, I think, and it, it's a whole thing that I hadn't thought about it. So I find it really interesting that um, I believe that that is the case, that that is how that is working. Thanks for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe. Let me know how you think. Um, oh, wow, the flies are coming out and really getting me. Let me think, let me know what you think of the AI tracking with the Hohem. I've got to find some balancing on this, like literally balancing for the camera because it's working really hard to keep the camera up. And I need to figure out if I can make it like adjust in some way. But overall, it seems to be doing a pretty interesting job. Okay, after all that, it, it's stop right there. I like that it does this. I'm interested to see like how we can learn to work with it more. Um, but I think it's going to be neat to use. It did it again. Just, I don't know why it loses me. And uh, as always, if you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at the link that's going to be right up here, buymeacoffee.com slash Scott L. Miller. That helps us afford the things like the GoPro and the Hohem uh, stable, I sta um, I I stable M6, I think that's right, uh, and, and being able to bring this content to you and all the equipment and all the things that we need to make this possible. And uh, if you're looking for assistance and relocation, shoot, up our, uh, shoot an email to, I'm being weird today, shoot an email to our partner at relocatenicaragua.com, that's info at relocatenicaragua.com. As always, share on social media, tell your friends about the show, and I will see all of you tomorrow.